Anyway. Well, let's talk about Saturday Night's Main Event. Hopefully we all watched the right one. I did. I hope so. Season 7, Episode 2. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. You idiot. I'm kidding. Stop it. I'm kidding. We watched Saturday Night's Main Event, Season 7, Episode 2, April 27th, 1991. Your hosts, Macho Man Randy Savage of Vince McMahon, occasionally joined by Rowdy Roddy Piper. Tonight we have a 20-man battle royal. The Nasty Boys defending the tag titles against the Bushwhackers. And Ultimate Warrior versus Sergeant Slaughter. Macho uh, interviews. Slaughter. Colonel Mustafa. General Adnan. Uh, uh, he defeated that puke, the warrior, for the rumble of the title. I do like that Randy That's Savage cool. is a babyface. No. But he has a blood grudge against the Ultimate Warrior for retiring him. I don't think he's a babyface here. I think he is. Because he this is he had just been retired by Warrior yeah. a few weeks prior. And he buried Warrior constantly. He buried Hogan constantly, which, you know. Uh, you know, they had a, they had a history. Yeah, oh, they, boy, did they. Yeah. Uh, anyways, Slaughter calls Warrior a puke and Hogan a slime, on and on and on. I know what you're, this is also, this is key. This is right after The Undertaker and Paul Bearer had locked the Ultimate Warrior in a casket and tried to suffocate him to death. Yes. And, uh, and then Paul Bearer locked the casket. Yes. And they couldn't get him out. That's right. I know what you're afraid of, Sarge says. I talked to Paul Bearer. I'll take your breath away. Then Gene interviews the warrior, who went absolutely crazy with a blow dryer on this <laughs> particular day. <laughs> Gene reminds him of how the Undertaker attempted to murder him, and he had to be saved from the casket. He says as, he's, as, he, was, as he was breathing what may have been his final breath, his last visions were of vermin, like Sergeant Slaughter and the Undertaker. He vows to bring Slaughter to the ultimate battle. And so it is Sergeant Slaughter versus the Ultimate Warrior. Very simple match. I know. Be. Man, that's one way to put it. <laughs> this match fucking sucked. Thank you, Brian. Sucked. God damn it. They didn't do jack shit in this match. Just horrible. Wow. <laughs> Am I the only one? No. No, you're Bro, this was the worst right. match on the show by miles. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you guys were talking about, you know, the Bushwhackers and the Nasty Boys. I watched that fucking match. I was like, this match is 10 stars better than that Ultimate Warrior Sergeant Slaughter match. And then we had, what, uh, Ted DiBiase and, and, uh, Bret, and Hart. Bret Hart. Yeah. That was fucking mm -hmm. great. Yeah. And then we had sure. Tito Santana and the Mountie, which was Pretty miles Beyond Sergeant Slaughter and the Ultimate Warrior. Wow. A terrible, horrible, no good, very bad match is what this was. Goodness. What, I'm the only one? No. no. no apparently I'm the no. only one who didn't hate it. Apparently you are. Okay. Were you watching it? I thought it was. Were your eyes open? <laughs> I, I, they were. They saw Slaughter poke Warrior in the eyes for the heat. That was the heat. No distraction, no tripping, no interference. Yep. Just, I will poke you in the eyeball. I did laugh when uh, they went to the long bear hug in the middle. And Randy Savage, in both in and out of character notes, lack of conditioning makes cowards of us all. So uh, Warrior's making a comeback until Paul Bearer wheels a casket into ringside and Warrior just freezes. Match continues and then Warrior makes another comeback and then Bearer opens the casket. Undertaker is inside. The Warrior freaks out and freezes. Here's this dead man who tried to kill him. He's not moving at all. Sarge hits him from behind and lays him out. At this exact moment, General Adnan attacks the DQ. When Sarge was winning. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was bullshit. I won't lie about that. I was going to say, what was the good part of this match? I don't know. You don't know? They were Sounds like nothing. Aside from the bear hug, they were doing stuff. Was... Aside from the bear hug, there was nothing aside from the bear hug. They did a bear hug for nine minutes out of a ten-minute match. The fuck else was there? Some clobbering? Some sloppy Some brawling? Some clobbering? Yeah. This the match sucked. The best action in this match was Warrior running down to the ring. Yeah, they got all blown up and couldn't do shit. Can we agree the post-match was awesome? I forget what it was. So Taker gets out of the casket and Taker oh, and Slaughter yeah. screw. They're quadruple teaming Warrior until Hogan goes to make the save. Hogan's running wild. And uh, Hogan takes his belt and clonks the Undertaker with it. But the Undertaker totally no-sells it. Yes. He just stands there. Hogan is scurred. So his course of action now is to chase Sarge and company to the back. That gets him out of the ring. So now it's Taker and Warrior going one-on-one. -on -one. And listen, fine. You hated the match. God bless you. You hated the match. People were going 
nuts. That's fine. Warrior. It was 1992 or whatever. Yeah. It's 2023. He keeps it hitting sucked. Taker. Taker's not moving at all. And finally, he hits the ropes like five times. It's one big tackle. And Taker flips over the ropes, but lands on his feet on the floor, yes. still unfazed. Yes. And uh, that was that. Do you realize there was also an excruciatingly long battle royal on this show? That I saw. And mm. that match was better than this match? If you say so. Yes, it was. Maybe not the first two thirds. The first two hours no. were not so. But the last one third was. I guess it was down to the Kurt Hang and Shawn Michaels. And actually, it came down to five great workers at and the great end. Great Valentine, yeah. 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 So uh, Dave said that the, the post match on this stuff was great, but the match itself was terrible in both men's parts. He says the match was negative stars. Yes. But the angle will get Undertaker over even more negative one star. Mm hmm. The Nasty Boys see the Bushwhackers are grotesque, ugly, and scummy. All true. But not nasty. And Arguable. The Bushwhackers try to show how nasty they are by inspecting Roddy Piper under his kilt. Yeah, they, they try to goose him. They yeah. try to lick him. And it all was pretty nasty. sorts of private areas. Yeah. There was a line here about a shrimp on the Barbie, even though they are from New Zealand. So Bushwhackers versus Nasty Boys is the match. And I went into this with very low expectations. <laughs> But, but it was good. Do you know what I got? What did you get? I did not get any Bushwhackers match. I got a Sheep Herders match. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'd go that far. <laughs> but uh, they, you know, they worked hard. They were, the, the all four the day, guys did. They still went like this every time they walked. And, and the crowd went nuts. They, they yeah. half ass. It, it was a half ass Sheep Herders match. Which is much better than Which a tip better average than a Bushwhackers, Bushwhackers match. match yes. yes. And the Nasty Boys can move. Nasty Boys always work hard. Yeah. They, 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 they do what they do. It's, it's limited, but they do it a lot. <laughs> they do it hard. Uh, Butch got a hot tag and ran wild. This thing fucking rules. There was a point here where there was a uh, chaos going on, a pier six brawl or whatever, and the Bushwhackers get a near fall when a, a nasty boy tries a body slam, and the other Bushwhacker like pushes him over, and they got the two point nine count, and the nasty boy kicks out, and people were pissed. Well, they were pissed after they stopped cheering because they thought it was the finish. Yes, they went nuts when they thought the Bushwhackers beat the Nasty Boys for the world tag team titles. So after all this, it's, it's choking and booting and elbows and punches and clobbering, just nonstop, bell to bell. The finish, Nobs hits a double leg takedown, <laughs> gets a cradle, and with help from Sags on the outside, wins. Yeah, what was the help? Sags <laughs> pushed his ass with his foot right. for extra leverage. That's right. He made yeah. his ass heavier. That's right. That's right. I, I just laughed that in this, in this crazy-ass brawl, scientific wrestling won the day. I love the Bushwhackers. By any means necessary. Uh, on, the, on the comeback for the Bushwhackers, they literally hit clotheslines and then swung their arms and marched around the ring, and the crowd was going ballistic. Yeah. They were jumping up and down and doing their, their walk thing. It's just... Bushwhackers uh, were over, brother. It's crazy. They were so horrible, but it's crazy. They were all right. No, come on. They were all right in this match. This match, yes, but usually yes. they're cartoon characters. Well, yeah. Dave said Nasty's at least sold the garbage, and that's what Bushwhackers' <laughs> offense is. Wow. Wow. Bushwhackers looked so bad with their unique ability to make every single thing they do look mistimed. Ah, I don't one and one far. quarter star. Yeah, it's better than a minus star. Because, in fact, Vinny, mm -hmm. the Warrior match was the worst match on this show <laughs> by miles. It's clear that's a consensus opinion. Miles. Yeah. Gene interviews The Undertaker and Paul Bearer. So I'd, I'd have given that match star and three-quarter, maybe two stars. The Bushwhackers match? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's Paul Bearer. He hasn't quite gotten the character and the voice down yet. He's still figuring it out, but he's on his way there. The most notable line here, uh, I, I rewound this because I, I want to make sure this is actually what Paul Bearer said. Undertaker and I have been saving box tops. Yeah. And Warrior is our biggest prize. Yeah. Well, now I need to know what cereal The Undertaker eats. <laughs> well, I, I assume booberry. <laughs> Something like that, or, yeah. Or, or maybe Rice Krypties. How long did you... Uh... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I am proud of that one. I'm, I'm disgusted because it probably took you three hours to come up with that one. I, would not, I will not confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> you, probably, you probably Googled list of breakfast cereals. Uh, what can I come up with here? Scorn flakes. <laughs> Well, this is silly. Yeah, come on. <laughs> hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. They have a 
commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.